What's up guys, Microdex Mushrooms here. We broke out of the lab. We're in the streets. We're going to the farmer's market to find a specimen to clone. Let's do this. Oh my God, it is hot out here. But hey, we acquired the mushrooms. Shout out to the Eason of Madison Mushrooms. He was kind enough to give us a little discount. So really appreciate it, man. Let's go clone these bad boys. Back in the lab again, you guys know the deal. We're making sure everything is sterile before we get started. Spraying our Petri dishes. Today, we're working on King Oysters, uh, also known as Pleurotus Eringi. We're gonna be inoculating plates and cups that have the same media. This is agar and grain water. So there's no honey in this, like in our previous recipe. We're just gonna be using grain water to prep them to go onto grain. So they'll already know how to break it down. So the key thing about cloning a mushroom that you wanna remember, especially if you plan on cloning any wild specimen is that you should always take your samples from the inside of the mushroom. The reason we do this is because contamination. Contamination exists in the open air and on all surfaces, but on the inside of the mushroom, none of that really exists. It's only the mushroom inside. So when you find a mushroom, you wanna bring it into sterile conditions, split it open, and then use a sterile scalpel or a knife to cut a sample out from the middle. This is a lot easier with a mushroom like this because it's super meaty um, and there's a lot of mycelium on the inside to work with. This will not always be the case for fungi such as Trimedes versicolor, also known as turkey tail. It's very thin, so sometimes you might have to put the whole specimen onto agar, which is totally fine. You'll just have to isolate the contamination away through multiple transfers. You'll just transfer out anything that you identify as mycelium coming from the sample away from whatever else may be growing on the plate. And you'll do that over and over again until you have a fully clean plate. And that's when you can either slant away your specimen for later or move it to grain you really don't want to move on to the next step until you know that your specimen is completely clean. Otherwise, the mycelium will lose the colonization battle. And in the long run, that means that you'll be wasting resources because they'll be contaminated. So best to be patient and make sure that your specimen is very clean. So now we're moving on to the cups. It's all the same deal. It's the same mixture. It's just we're going to be doing a different type of experiment with these. So we'll probably do like an all in one cup. We're going to let the mycelium colonize the agar inside the cup. And then later down the line, we'll add our grain and they'll colonize the grain. Then we'll add the substrate colonize the substrate and we may or may not put a casing layer but then we're going to fruit right out of the cup and then that will give us like a broader understanding of how each step works if you happen to have like shaky hands or if you need a more precise cut you can put your fingers together like i'm doing here it'll make your cuts a lot more stable and then we'll just drop that sample right in there so anytime I'm going to make a fresh cut I just keep splitting the mushroom over and over again to get fresh surface area to cut from and just tapping it into the cup So pretty straightforward, just follow sterile technique as you work and take your 
samples out from your specimen and everything should be fine. Even if you get contamination, that's just a learning experience. You can practice isolating. We're gonna do that in later videos. We're gonna show what bacteria looks like on a plate, uh, what trichoderma looks like, what aspergillus looks like. And we're gonna experiment with taking our mycelium off of that and cleaning it up. We're gonna take some full mushrooms and put them on the plate, see what that looks like. And fun fact, not all mycelium grow white or stay white. Some, such as like shiitake, they turn brown after a while. Others may even turn red, like Pycnoporus. Also, if you happen to have any condensation or water in your cups or your agar dishes, it's totally fine. It's not really gonna make a difference. Just make sure that your initial inoculation point is well established and you should be good to go. But yeah, this has been Shay from Microdex Mushrooms. Signing out, I'll see you guys next time. Hey, Microdex here. If you guys want to support the channel and save some money on some plant and fungi supplies, go and check out the Plant Cell Technology Store and use the code Microdex to save 10%.